trusting God. I don't know what to tell you. Amen? Amen. Uh, thank you for joining us on this morning, our uh, uh, annual women's uh, weekend. We had an awesome time yesterday. Yes. Amen. Amen. We had a glorious time in the Lord. And we are here uh, today waiting and watching and anticipation about what God's going to do on today. Amen. Yeah. At this time, we'll have our morning prayer. I'm going to ask Reverend uh, Louise Marsh if she would come and lead us in our opening prayer. Purpose. 
Amen. At this time, we'll turn the service over to the choir as they minister to us in song.
good and that he's worthy to be praised. I want to welcome all of you here today to the Righteous Church of God. In the absence of our pastor who is in Africa this morning, and he's already probably preached several times, Pastor Butler, Lady Sherry, and members of the team who left early this week to go over for the mission trip. He sends his love. He uh, congratulates Reverend Jolly and all of the women for this beautiful day of worship. Aren't we having a blessed time? Amen. Just want to remind you of a few quick announcements as we continue in worship on this Tuesday night that will not be the pastor's Bible study, of course, because he is out of town. We will have our prayer conference call at 7.30 p.m. And on Thursday night, the Lit Ministry, Living in Truth, will have their uh, Bible study via Zoom. That information is available on our website, www rcgministries.org. Amen? Amen? Amen. This time we want to invite you to have an opportunity to bring your tithes and your offerings and your, and your gifts of love. Our uh, ushers are going to bring baskets. And those of you who are watching online, please remember that you can uh, sow into the ministry through Givelify. Access, access that on the web. Find Rights Church of God and log right in. Those of you who have the RCG app, you can log in. Amen. And let's just be a blessing to the body of Christ. It is because of your continued faithful support that we are able to continue in ministry. Amen? Amen. 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 This time, Reverend Jolly is going to come and she's going to continue us in worship. You know, yesterday uh, we had our women's workshop, and the theme of our conference this year is Do You Know? As you uh, saw, our script, uh, scripture theme, our theme scripture is Romans 8 28, and the scripture says, And you know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. And, and one of the things, or one of the many things that we ministered to the ladies on yesterday is in order for us to know, we got to start speaking and acting like we know. Amen? Amen. That means we have to be mindful about what comes out of our mouth. The Bible tells us that we have the power of life and death in our tongue. So we need to speak life to dead situations. We need to take situations that need to be dead and call them to be dead. Amen? Amen? We need to also be mindful that we have to look at things um, intentionally and critically and refocus because there's always a blessing in whatever situation that you find yourself in. There's blessings in the tragedy. There's blessings in the problems. There's blessings in the situations and circumstances. It's easy to focus on what's wrong. But it takes an eye, a spiritual eye, to dig through the stuff that's wrong and focus on the blessing in the midst of all of the mess. Because God is always in the background and working on our behalf. Amen. And we have to get that as a part of our spirit. And, and, and yesterday, God poured into and, uh, and ministered to us on yesterday. And we walked away yesterday understanding that God is intentional about what he does and what he allows to happen. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say this and I'll turn it over to the choir. One of the things that um, I am a proponent of in whenever God gives the opportunity to teach is to remind ladies and men that because you are a child of God, absolutely nothing can happen to you unless God says it's okay. Amen? Amen. Nothing can happen to you unless God says it's okay. And if God says it's okay, even the tragic things, even the difficult things, even the hard things, he has it worked out already. And there's something that we have to learn. It's something that we have to get through that circumstance for the next place in glory that he's taken us. Amen? And 
And sometimes it's hard to see that when you're in the middle of something. Right. But if I can encourage you to get that as a part of your spirit today, I promise you that when you go through life's challenges, it will be different because you will remember that nothing can happen to you unless God says it's okay. The enemy has to get God's permission to let anything happen to you. Any illness, any sickness, any family issues, any marital problems, any debts. The enemy has got to get God's permission. Amen. And I don't know about anybody else, but that's good news for me. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to turn it over to our choir um, to um, take us further in worship. Before they come, I want to go ahead and introduce our speaker. Uh, our speaker tonight is Pastor Don Harvey, a woman of God. Amen. Amen. You know, it's just so amazing how God will connect people in your life. And in our conversation, it is like we've known each other for years. And the things that we have been through in life, how connected they are. But that's how God works, amen? Because we are a family. And I'm going to tell you, we are about to be blessed by a mighty, powerful woman of God. God has anointed her to teach and minister the Gospels in a way that's so simplistic, where you walk away with some gems, some things that arm you to, to apply to your everyday walk. Amen? So I want to introduce to some, uh, present to others, uh, Pastor Don Harvey, we are so excited to have you with us today, my sister. I love you all. I love you all. And we pray that God will be with you in any way he can fit. Amen. You may come and take the podium after the choir. Amen.
scripture. And she's like, the Lord just dropped it in my spirit. And Louise, I couldn't do anything but chuckle. Because I said, you know, do you need to pull me out of something? Is something happening? Come on, family. Come on. But whenever you're leveling up, yeah, yeah. Whenever you're going higher in God, yes. there's a different level of warfare yes. that comes with elevation. Yes. There's a different level that comes with you giving your heart to God in another way. Right. And one of the things that I have learned is that if you submit your life to God, you get more than you bargained for. You don't hear me this way. Some people think submission is subtraction, <laughs> but submission is addition. Yeah. Okay. And when you yeah. submit to God and give him what you have, everything we have is natural. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. Yeah. Say God. Everything that we have is natural. So when you give God something, it's not even spiritual. Mm -hmm. The spirit we have is his. Yeah. So if we do anything in the spirit, we're just giving him, him that. Mm -hmm. You don't have any spiritual power, don't hurt me. So if we're giving him something natural, I, what we give him doesn't even equal what he's doing. Yes, that's right. So there's never a subtraction when you give God you. There's always an addition because he's going to do something supernatural. Yes. But the enemy would paint it like, if you got to give up all that. Do you know what I'm about to get? Do mm -hmm. right. 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 you know what God's about to do? He can have this. Right, yeah. yeah. Because he said, I have not seen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. 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 All, right. All right, come on, let's go. Let's go. Somebody said, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> he ain't mess around with me all week for nothing. He better hold on to his boots. I only listen. Yeah. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Oh. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Okay, I gotta set it up and teach it the way you're supposed to teach it because everybody knows that this means that anyone who's a child of God, who loves God, everything's gonna work for their good. That's the very common text, right? And it is true, and it is sound, and it is exciting, but what if I told you it was more than that? What if I told you it is more than just working for your good? What if I told you that this scripture is an active text that places biblical law in the earth? Yes. What if I told you that this was your legal right to cancel the enemy? Mm. What if I told you that this text gives you permission to put timelines on your trouble? Oh, what if I told you? What if I told you that this text, if used properly, would allow you to aim your promises at the enemy's head and he better go. What if I told you that if you understood this text, you would have another conversation when a problem came up. You tell the conversation, the longer you stay, the more you have to ask. What if I told you that? In 2013, I began to research this text. And it was very interesting to me because it is a promised scripture. Somebody say promised scripture. Promise. So it's something that all the years of our life in church, we have heard people make this declaration right. over our lives. Right. And we would say, it's going to work, right? Oh, yeah. But what if I told you that that's where the devil wants you to stop? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. He wants you to stop at, it's going to work. Mm. He doesn't want you to stop like, this is a weapon. He doesn't want you to stop that. This gives me legal right in the earth realm to have a conversation with my destiny. Mm -hmm. Let me show it to you. Y'all ready? Yeah. And I know some people are saying, oh, she got to break this one down because I've been in church all my life. Anybody ever felt like that? A revelation come and you're like, where did they get that from? <laughs> let, let me tell you a little side story. When I first started researching this text, I did it in the Greek and the Hebrew. I had a laptop that I love. Anybody ever had something they love and it breaks? Yes. Yes. Okay, well, in my old life, I was clumsy. In my new life, I'm delivered, right? And in my old life, you ever gotten dressed and fell down by yourself? Nobody pushed you or nothing. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You ever got to go to your own feet and then look at the side of like something was on it? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on, right? So I'm going down the steps one day. I had this laptop that I love in my hand and took a slide. 
my tongue. Somebody said she took a tongue. <laughs> now, anybody, uh, for those of you who don't know, I think I'm sidebar comedian in the Holy Ghost, but just roll. <laughs> so for anybody that knows me, I value my information. So as my friends, or I can't remember, what, it was 13, so I, somebody was there, armor bearer, kid, somebody. I go down the steps. I didn't even try to save myself, y'all. <laughs> I'm Louise, try to hold the left. How many people do that? I didn't make it. She didn't make it. It needed to be my elbow. It was in a sling for about eight weeks. Do you know I could not find the lexicon version in Greek of my notes? Do you know off and on as I've retort this text, I have looked for the lexicon version of this because it's what gives me the basis of the legal right that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Do you know up until this morning, about 8 o'clock, I found a similar version. On, but do you know yeah. information changes? They like to dilute stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can go to a lexicon and it doesn't have the same meat. Anybody? For those who yeah. it doesn't yeah. have the same meat, yeah. it's still diluted. It's like they're trying to minimize knowledge. Mm -hmm. right. So it's still a lexicon. It gives the Greek translation, but it doesn't give the full Greek definition or the other words used for it. Up until 9 o'clock this morning, I found a partial one, and I was like, eh, I'm going to go with it. So, uh, you know, I, I saw your color scheme, and so I, I get this beautiful outfit that fits when I, when I put it on. It looked great. I go to get dressed in the morning. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Now, when I tried it on, it was fine. I'm not clumsy today. Amen. But I go and put it on, and the zipper broke. Oh. Brand new. Oh. High end. Brand new. Oh. And I said, what a clock. Listen, do you think I, I didn't even stop. I just laughed. <laughs> then I went to get my shoes and realized somebody had took my church bag to the church, the other church. Grabbed <laughs> 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 my new flat. Grab two knee highs, got to the car, one of the knee highs was gone. Oh. And I said, this word going to be good. Yeah. I ain't ready to bring this word today. So I get in the car, and because I was still joyful, guess what happened? The lexicon came up with the translation from 2013 that I have been looking for off and on. Wow. Just for you. Wow. I have not been able to preach it this way. Wow. The way I'm about to share it, it says 2013. Oh 10 years ago. Because oh the enemy wanted, the clothes was to get me to stop looking. Right. Uh, right. The shoes was to get me to look for the shoes, not the word. Right. Right. Yeah. But I stayed on his right. word. Yeah. Yeah. Officially 5'2", but I know I'm 5'3 and a half. Don't disrespect my hand. I need it. <laughs> I'm going to just move the laptop down so you can see the top of my eyes. <laughs> but see how the devil works? Yes. So come on, let's get into this word. Amen? Amen. Amen. I work for this word. Amen? I'm determined to give you this word. If you look at Romans 8, chapter 28, we're going to read from the Amplified. Then I'm going to go to the definition. Then we're going to knock the double head off. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Romans yeah. 8, verse 28 says, in Amplified, we are assured and know that God, being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and are called according to his design and his purpose. The Amplified says that we are assured and we know that God is a partner in our labor. That's right. That's right. See, when we look at it in the regular text, the regular text just tells us this is what happens for you if you endure. But the Amplified says, yes, this is what happens for you when you endure. But by the way, you're not in this battle by yourself. By the way, you're not laboring through this process by yourself. And listen, there's some processes, which is why I shared my testimony with you today, that you don't typically tell people about. There are some weeks where you just have a bad week, where one thing happens and another thing happens. And I challenge you today to check your destination when you have a bad week. Because you may have forgotten to focus on something. Come on, somebody. He wanted me to focus on the shoes. He wanted me to focus on the clothing. He wanted me to focus on the time. And I just said, God, where is this text for the people that you're sending me to? Have you missed a destination in your purpose because you landed? 
landed in the distraction. And did you go back and look for it, or have you forgotten all about it? Jesus. And the enemy went, and it could be something small. There could have been someone you were supposed to go visit at the hospital. There could be someone that you were supposed to go bless. There could be a class you were supposed to take online that was three days. And guess what? You missed it. You know why? Because he didn't want you to focus. He wanted you looking at the problem. And how, I've been guilty of that. How many people have got so caught up in the what else is going to happen? How many people have felt like that would be my life? See what happens to me? That's why I said I used to be clumsy. That's why I, I don't claim the enemy. That's why. Because the enemy will make you claim what's common. That's why. He will make you claim what's common. He will have you saying, well, I mean, that one's in our family. The devil is a lie. You're a generation of curse mother. It ran in your family. It's past tense. But if we don't understand that God is a co-laborer. Now, when they talk about winning souls, it says we're co-laborers. But when it talks about winning in life, they say he labors with you. That's right. Oh, my Lord. Oh, yeah. When we talk about soul winning, it says we're co-laborers. Yeah. But when we talk about fighting mm. for our life, yeah. when we talk about getting through a problem, it says he labors with you. Yes. God comes alongside you to make an announcement. Do you know? Yeah. Right. Do you know? Let me give you this text before we go on real quick. Let's go to this. Because sometimes we have to understand that clarity is the answer to resolution in life. People who do not know who God is are not saved. People who do know who God is are saved. People who have clarity on the resurrection are saved. People who do not have clarity on the resurrection are not saved. Clarity rules the day. That's why the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. Why? He brings clarity. That's it. You understand, right? Everything is made clear. The Bible tells us, I'm going to go to Psalms chapter 53 verse 2 if you want to put that in your notes. Psalms chapter 53 verse 2. God looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. God is sitting in heaven, looking down at the earth, at the children of men, to see if anybody has clarity. Why is that important? Somebody say, I, that, did that stun somebody? Just understand, he's looking to see, does anybody understand who I am? Does anybody understand that I might just be called God, but I'm a deity, not a man? Does anybody understand I'll go so far that I will sacrifice a life for them? Does anybody understand that the reason they didn't die when they went through the problem they thought was going to kill them is because I was carrying them? Does anybody understand? Yes. And you know how he knows if we understand? What does the next line say? Who seek him. Yes. God knows we understand him when we seek him. He's looking down to see who's calling out his name or who's transformed by his work. Yes. Those are the two things that happen. We receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and then we act like it. Yes. Amen. Because some people receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and say, He know my heart. Yeah. They do the same thing. Listen, when the power of God hit me, I changed. When the power of God hit me, I shut my mouth. And listen, when you want to argue the whole day, you only argue, hey, come on, somebody. You change. When the power of God hits you, something should happen. You should not be the same. You should not act the same. You should not handle things. The same, right? Because if you are the same, did it hit you? Or did you just say, I know Jesus rose from the dead? Right. But I'm not surrendered. Wow. I'm just notified. Wow. Wow, Dr. Come on. That's good, sir. I, I don't want to look like 
I used to look. Oh my God, somebody, somebody please share this. I don't know what's going on. Should, you should not look like he didn't come. Right. 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 You better look like 
you gave up your life, not your life. It's not going to work. And right now we are in a season where you are going to have to stand by God's word for yourself. And you will be in places where you stand alone. But the Bible says God is looking for those. The children of men. Right? He's watching to see which way we're going. Are you going to do what's popular? Or are you going to do what's powerful? And in this season, you can't afford. Listen, it's not going to turn out the way they think it's going to turn out. It's fun. It's popular. It's glamorous. It might give you a lot of likes, but it will not give you a life. Right. Not life eternal. Right. And so we have to understand that this is the time when you understand this word that you make a choice about what's going to happen the rest of your life. Right. Now, one of the things I've decided is my choice has already been made. When I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, there are no more choices. What does the word say? That's those are, it's the choice was made. I choose him. What does his word say? Do I always like having to carry that out? Uh, no. Do I always like having to go back and get it together? Uh, no. Do you know that you can be right sometime and still be outside the will of God? Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because the consequence says you should respond this way. But the word says, aren't you more mature than that? Right. Uh-oh. Come on. I don't like any of y'all. We find me on the same page. We are all on the same page. But guess what I do? I love the fact that I don't have to figure out who I'm supposed to be. What does his word say? Amen? So the Bible says in Psalms 53 and 2, God looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. He said it's going to be popular, but it's going to take you out. It's going to be popular, but you're going to have a problem afterwards. It's going to be popular, but you're going to be frustrated. It's going to be popular. You're going to have to choose. Amen? Amen. Somebody said the choice has already been made. The choice has already been made. Okay, so let's go back to our text. If the Bible tells us in Romans 8, chapter 28, that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And I'm saying that this gives you legal right in the earth to execute destiny. This is a legal declaration. That means it is spiritually illegal that when you come up against a crisis, it does not have to pay you. It is against God's law that when you come up against a crisis, that that thing has to give you a payment. It's illegal. It's not just a cute text. This says it's illegal for you to take someone I love calls me harm. It's illegal for you to put depression, burden, anxiety on me. It's illegal for you to do it and not pay me. Now, you heard what she said earlier. If God granted, it's not illegal that they do it. If God allows it, it is not illegal that it happened. It's illegal that you didn't get paid for it. I'm <laughs> here, Y'all trying to process this, right? I'm going to show it to you. It is, listen, when God, the Bible says, help me, Holy Ghost, slow down because I'm at the end. The Bible says God declares the end of your life from the beginning. If God has declared the end of your life from the beginning, he already knows when the enemy is going to attack you. And then God determines how far it can go. How do we know that? The book of Job. I don't have time today. He determines how far it can go. He said, you can bump him, but do not kill him. Right? So he, he'll determine how far. And if you look at God's activity in the book of Job, again, I don't have time to go through it. Then he says to Job, brace yourself like a man. Now, I was taken aback. Have you ever been troubled and then God said, get yourself together? Is anybody coming to help? Have you ever prayed, sidebar, have you ever prayed and stuff was happening and nothing got better? This is how I am. Ain't nobody coming. Come on. Like, nobody see what's happening right now. Like, no, none of y'all see what's happening. Like, you ain't see that. Like, that's really how I am. No, y'all just gonna watch. Right. 
They left anyway. Yeah. They took them off the respirator. Anyway. Yeah. See this? Jesus. Oh, God. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, God. And he said, I declare the end. Yeah. 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 From the beginning. And so everything you're going to experience, God has already seen it. He didn't send it. But he saw it. He didn't send it. But he saw it. Because we are in a world of sin. The earth is dark. The only thing that lights up the earth in the spiritual realm are saints, are the remnant. It is not hard. Listen to what I'm going to say to you. The Bible says Satan roams about seeking whom he may devour. Let me ask you something. How does he know? How does he know who to go get? When the police arrest someone, they have what you call a warrant. They know their address, and they know where to pick them up. Satan is not God. He doesn't know your destiny. He doesn't know your assignment. He doesn't know anything. How does he know that you're the person he needs to pick on? How does he know to go into your bloodline and try to jack you up before you're born? So by the time you get here, people in your life don't even know what love is. How does he know how to place a generational curse so you're an alcoholic and addict because you're caught? How does he know? Because when he roams the earth in the spirit realm, and we know he does because the Bible says he appeared as an angel of light. He's not just looking in the earthly realm. There's a light on in your house. The earth is dark. How does he know? You said yes to Christ and your house lit up. And in that moment, Satan started looking for your blood. And he started attacking your grandmother and your great-grandmother and your mother. So by the time they got to you, you were emotionally dysfunctional. You were emotionally unavailable. He started attacking the, the men's fathers, their great-grandfathers, their great-great-grandfathers because he saw the light. Yeah. Jesus. And what begins to happen is instead of going along with God's word and understanding, he didn't send it, but he sees it. Now is spiritually illegal. It has to pay me. We fall prey to the attack. And the enemy is gambling, hoping to say, that's just how life is. The devil is a lie. Yes, he is. That is not how life is. The Bible says, I came that you might have a life and have it what? More abundantly. Getting your head knocked off is not more abundant. Getting your heart broken, emotionally devastated financially challenged, children in trouble, that is not abundance and it is not your portion. The devil is a lie. We come out of agreement with patterns in your life right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. We come out of agreement with situations that have come to kill our destiny in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is not normal. It is not normal. We've made it normal. It happened to my grandmother. It happened to my mother. I mean, that's just my... The devil is a lie. Amen. That's it. We break it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody say it's spiritually illegal. Spiritually illegal. For it not to bless me. Okay, now, you ready to know why it's spiritually illegal? Y'all like, can you get to that 13-year-old lexicon? <laughs> there is a place, hallelujah, where God wants you to understand. This is what's funny, y'all. Now, Renee just put the lexicon back on my computer before we came out here. Y'all know it's gone. Right? <laughs> but you know I bookmarked it. She won't look at it again. Uh, See, I'm telling you, he's afraid. Yeah. He's afraid. Okay, let's look at the text. Somebody say he should be afraid. He should, he should be, be afraid. afraid. Let's look at the text. It says, and we know yeah. that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. The word to in that text has instructions. Hmm. To, if I say happy birthday to you, right? Is it my birthday or your birthday? Uh, right? So the text is saying, I got something for you. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. If you look at this in the Greek, the Greek tells
tells us, my God, that this word describes a motion into any place or thing and can often be translated into, into or act. What does that mean? It means this can describe a motion out of a thing or into a thing. But in this particular text, this word means an arrival. So the Greek translation is telling us that the word to means the word spins in motion and is directed towards a place or thing and lands in an arrival. So that means when the problem comes in, God spins it over your life into motion and it has to land at the place of the blessing. So it comes in as trouble and he turns it.
be transforming your thinking. It's going to be all right. But maybe we're repeating cycles because lessons are repeated until learned. And if God has a promise on your life, he can't send it to the next promise as the old person. That's it. But then we're not transformed. We are transformed for a week until trouble comes. We might be transformed for a year. <laughs> and something show up. And you thought you were better than that. You thought you had grown more than that. And the problem comes to tell you, you're not transformed. You operate on Holy Ghost, not change. God wants change. Why? Change is what's going to carry you when life is hard. God's not wanting you to transform because he needs something from you. God wants you to transform because you won't survive where you're going without being brand new. He's got somewhere he wants to take you that your faith hasn't elevated to yet. Let me give you this example real quick. Somebody say I'm going to be all right. Y'all quiet, it's all right. Wrong. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to be reading out the Amplified. <laughs> the Bible says, but he said to me, and we all know this story. This is when uh, Paul was in trouble. He was having uh, this buffet, and God would not release him from it. And this is where he is explaining. He said, but he said to me, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. But he said to me, my grace, my favor and loving kindness and mercy, I'm reading out of Amplified, is enough for you, sufficient against any danger, and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. When he says this, and I'm going to go back to Job in a second. When he says this, he is talking about what he has deposited in us. When God was talking to Job and he said, brace yourself like a man, I was saying to myself, who can stand before God and be questioned? Hmm. That didn't make sense to me. Because who can stand before God, brace yourself like a man, then be questioned by God? He said, I, he said, brace yourself like a man, for I have some questions for you. I'm running. That sounds like she's in trouble. Come on, somebody. Who can stand before God and be questioned? But God said to me, well, he can do that because I know what I put in him. So I'm telling him, brace yourself for what I've deposited in you. Wow. Wow, and so God is depending on that, that when life comes, you will brace yourself like what he put Ooh, in you. Yeah. And the challenge you experience, the challenge you experience is equal to the deposit. Yeah. 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 The challenge you experience is equal to the deposit. So if you feel like, if anybody ever felt like if emotionally, you just in your head, like, come on. Mike Tyson, not a great quoter, but a great quote. He said, everyone has a plan until you get hit in the face. They asked him what his plan was because he operated contrary to his skill set. Life ever hit you and you thought you were over something and you said something you would have never said? or felt something you thought you would never feel again, you're operating contrary to your development, your training, operating contrary to the word you know, operating contrary to the way you were raised because your emotions have responded, right? Anybody ever done that? I've done that, right? I know God, but I'm gonna get them. Come on, you're not, you're not gonna take me through that again. Come on, he's depending on that. He's depending on you not operating according to your training. Right. That's what he's depending on. That your emotions will outweigh the Sunday sermons you've been listening to. Right. And so Mike Tyson said, yeah, I've been training for years. And everybody has a plan until you get hit in the face. When life hits you in the face, what happens? Do you go according to your training? Or do your emotions get to stand up? Okay, let's go back to the text. So he says, Sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. For my strength and my power are made perfect, fulfilled, and completed, and show themselves most effective in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more 
gladly glory, this is Paul saying this, right? I will gladly glory in my weaknesses and infirmities that the strength and the power of Christ, the Messiah, listen to what I'm about to say, may rest, yes, may pitch a tent and dwell over upon me. It says that when you are going through and God puts you in a season of my grace is sufficient, you're going to be here for a minute. You're going to have to let this play out, y'all, Harvey. You ever want, I'm a fixer. Anybody else a fixer? Yeah. A problem comes, she's fixing it. And it's bad from mechanical you hear my church folks laughing my husband's probably shaking his head to the house the roof the plumbing, poor Marcus I'm going to try it before I call the plumber I promise you, it's terrible and sometimes I don't get it quite right and I got to call the plumber and I always said, well what had happened was <laughs> electrical I'm going to take that out and I'll see if I can fix it it's terrible <laughs> Somebody come to me with a problem, I'm already in the answer. They're like, I just really wanted you to listen to me. <laughs> they are so used to hearing, so the solution is. But can I get the problem all the way out? <laughs> I am solution oriented. I have to fix the problem. It is the way I am designed. But I am learning every day. Problem solving is time. I read the Bible. I should have got the hint from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, even if he don't come. <laughs> even if he doesn't come, you know he's at it. I'm like, come! Anybody coming? Anybody like me? Why would God's grace need to be sufficient if he came right away every time? Why? He said, even in danger, meaning he'll leave you in danger.
goes to waste. Not a tear they cried was wasted. A person that they lost, a heartbreak, a challenge, nothing was wasted. I speak right now, Father God, restitution in the mighty name of Jesus. And it doesn't have to be money, but God, that every area of their life would increase because today they said, me and you, God. Yeah. That every place, Father God, would be restored. That they would experience a season of overflow. Because they said, it's me and you, God. Father, I thank you right now that they will see the lights come on in their family emotionally. That they will see the lights come on in their marriage. That they will see the lights come on in their business. That they will see the lights come on in their job, Father God. In their relationships. In their bodies, Father. Let the light come on. Because they said, it's me and you, God. God, I'm one of the ones that understand. And from this day forward, I will seek you. I seal this, Father God, right now that there will be no retaliation in the spirit realm. God, we silence the enemy. Father, we demobilize his arsenal right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare that every storehouse that has a weapon with their name on it is destroyed by the blood of Christ right now in Jesus' mighty name. I destroy every record he's collected on them emotionally, every voice print, every fingerprint, every action that he's used to attack them, every code that he knows emotionally, that he pushes that code, he can get them. I erase those records right now in the spirit realm. We hide them under the wings of the Almighty, and we declare that in this season, God, they will see the fruit of their faith and the power of your hand. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And my soul says amen. Hallelujah. Amen.